Welcome to our new home. This is the Cyclone 4007 toy hauler. We have two awnings here and a back porch. Come inside. When you first step inside, you'll see our table. This was an important feature for our family because we really like having meals together at the table. Above the table, you'll see the TV, which you can watch from the comfy couch. I'll demonstrate for you. It goes all the way back. Over here is our kitchen. I really loved all of the counter space, um, which is amazing counter space in an RV. Um, we have sink cover. It's a full size sink. Love that. We can bathe our dog. In it. And then this lifts Did up. Did you just say bathe our dog? Yeah. <laughs> Poor kids, I don't know. And right here is the trash. I don't know what to call that. Cabinet. Opening. Yeah. And tons of cabinet space. Full size microwave. Three burner stove. And oven. We've got a residential size fridge. Come on to the bedroom. Right before the bedroom is a pantry. It's not that big, but it's still there. And deep. All right, this is the bedroom. Fireplace. And tons of drawers, which is great. We also really loved this picture window. It's beautiful. Can't wait for there to be mountains. And okay, and then this closet is where our washer and dryer will go. It is the laundry room. And then more closet space. Really good closet space here. This is a king size bed with storage. One side note to RV king size beds, they're a little bit more narrow than a normal king size residential and bigger than a queen though. Mm -hmm. But we're gonna put our queen bed in here. And right. most importantly about this room is, if you notice, this is a bump out inside of a bump out. So you have two slide outs here, which give you probably the largest bedroom of any fifth wheel. Yeah. I mean, it's, it is a full, probably four split. to five feet from bed to dresser here. Plenty of room to live. All right, and then this is the bathroom. Full size shower head. All right, and now we're gonna go out again. This is the view from the bedroom into the rest of the and we're house. And this is the systems panel, which I know nothing about, but we'll figure that out later. This is the, the digital panel that gives you all your tank levels and you can go back and you can control like your generator. You can turn your generator on from inside your RV here. You can control all your slide outs and your auto leveling and your awnings and everything all right here. Bunch of lights, your fans. Uh, these are manual or like, you know, they go straight to the systems for the slide outs and the awnings right here, not just through the digital system. And the reason we decided to purchase a toy hauler was because of this space back here. Um, normally people will put their ATVs or other toys back here. We're putting our children. So this space, you'll see the floor is more like an industrial kind of space. Garage floor. Um, this is a happy jack system with two levels. This is a couch on the bottom. We're gonna convert it to a an actual bed for our girls. 
Yep, there's the couch set up. You can do it one handed, that's how easy it is. <laughs> and then um, usually there's a top bunk here. We're gonna just use that as a storage loft. And then scroll over here. This is where a TV will go on the wall. And what I really loved about the Cyclone 2007 was that the laundry was not back here. All right, and the reason we really liked this model, the Cyclone 4007, was because this loft area up here, this bunk, faced the toy hauler section so that when we put our kids to bed, we can close the door down here and they have their own room and space. So um, this ladder comes up and that's where our son will sleep. And then this is a really great part right here is the um, porch. So these slide open like this and you can come out here to your porch and have a dance party. <laughs> and awning covered. Yep. So one more nice feature back here is if you uh, don't have a necessarily a, a family use for this area, this wall opens up further and you can latch the door flat so that you have the entire space here for your side-by-side uh, -side or ATVs and uh, plenty of D-ring tie downs on a uh, 3,000 pound floor. Right. Hey guys, welcome to the outside of our uh, Cyclone 4007 by Heartland. Uh, just want to start here at the main front entrance. Uh, when you go in, the stairs, they just fold right on up. Nice and dirty. And then they lock in right here to the side, and that's how that works. Uh, one little thing I want to point out and feature on this is they have adjustable legs here. You just pop this pin out, change the height of the legs to make sure that you can clear the door here. I didn't know that the first time, and I kept rubbing the door on the top here. Uh, move over here. We have our outdoor kitchen. Uh, what we have set up here is we have our TV, a light above the TV. We've got wind guards for your two burner stove. You have an outdoor sink area here. This just as a quick connect pops in. The sink, as you see, has no plumbing to it. It's just a use dump kind of a thing. Uh, this sliding tray, it just has two pins that lock it in place. Uh, so you've got that. Now your burner has a propane hose here. Propane hose comes down and out here and it clicks into your propane line right here. So uh, that is that. If you have uh, another feature that runs off of propane, you can plug in there and tap off your line uh, to connect a different grill or whatever. You've got a, a small little fridge, it works. Uh, has a little bit of a nice uh, tray up here but uh, you got your outdoor kitchen set up. This is just your uh, water heater exhaust and everything. If you need to get into it to uh, change things out, you've got it right here. Uh, one thing, tip, if you have an RV, whether it be a 4007 or not, that has uh, a little metal plug down here, you need to change that out every year. The reason is, is that's what creates a uh, corrosion-free environment inside. It's your uh, anode rod, I think it's called. Um, so that basically any any water that's in the, the tank, uh, corrosion will happen on that rod instead of corroding the inside of your tank. Uh, newer aluminum tanks, they have just a little plastic plug like what I have. You don't have to do any maintenance for that. We have a huge pass-through storage when it comes to a toy hauler, especially. Uh, as you can see, we got a lot of stuff in here. You can see it goes all the way through. We got a several tables we got a lot of bins of stuff coolers kids toy bin it's got two little uh side compartments here that are great for holding uh little small things along the way uh and then there's also an opening in the front that we'll get to uh side compartment up here just one of your propane tanks on this side there's a matching one on the other side also if you need to get to your hydraulic jackets right there now around here sorry we have the uh the truck hooked up because uh, we were staying tonight at a, 
or uh, last night at a Harvest host, so we never really disconnected. Um, in here, this is your full, they have these little clips on the side, boom. This is where your setup is for all your electrical. Um, you've got your inverter right here. You got your batteries down here, a couple 100 amp hour, uh, I think, I believe they're AGM batteries. This is your hydraulic fluid reservoir for your uh, leveling jacks. Uh, I want to make sure that you obviously have some in there. And a bunch of other wiring <laughs> that uh, I don't need to get into at the current moment. Move on over to the next one over here. This is your pass through storage uh, opening once again. Uh, just a nice feature to have it on uh, three different sides to access your storage. You got your own in 5,500 uh, watt generator. Great generator. I mean, producing 45 amps of uh, power, you can recharge, uh, you know, fully depleted. And by that, I mean 50% depleted batteries because uh, you don't want to put uh, lead batteries below 50%. You can recharge those in just a little over two hours. All right, come on through. Right on the back side here, got a nice light to help you work in this space at nighttime. Those are our kids. If you heard that scream. You got a switch right here, and this does your end cap lights. Let's take a look at those. Little uh, neat, or, uh, LED strips. Actually extremely bright at nighttime. Uh, so much so that if you got neighbors, you'll probably bother them. And you've got your auto leveling system so that you can actually do all your leveling and unhitch work right here. Unhitch, hitch. Do uh, both. Uh, while we're kind of here speaking about this, you do have a six point uh, leveling jacks. It's not a four point system. I mean, you need six when you're dealing with a 43 play triple axle rig. Uh, and so you've got two in the front, two about midway back, and then two behind the rear axles. Uh, and then it's basically a one touch. Once you get uh, your truck pulled out, you hit auto level and it does its magic. Continuing around the side, you have your other panel that's just like the other propane on the other side. Pass through storage. And then you've also got your uh, water, basically all your water connection here. All right, up top, you actually have cable uh, plugs. They go to each of the four TVs individually so that if you wanted to run, say, your DirecTV satellite, like the individual uh, box off of one, you can just send it straight to one of the TVs that you want inside. You've got your uh, water selection here. So you would put your water hose right up here if you have a connection. And then uh, you would select tank fill, obviously, if you want to fill your freshwater tank. If you're dry camping like we are tonight or today, at the harvest host and you want to be able to use your freshwater tank, select it there. City fixtures, that's basically if you want to just run off of your connection bypassing your uh, freshwater tank. Here's a nice thing right here. You got a freshwater, uh, or comes from the fresh tank or the city fixture, you got a little shower here. Uh, I didn't have it out, but there's a uh, plug-in uh, coiled up hose with a spray attachment on it where you can put whatever attachment you want and uh, click it in here you got hot water and cold water you've got uh once again your this is your main cable this is if you're at a campsite and you have uh cable from the campground you plug it in right here and it'll go throughout your your rv uh this is your black tank flush fun stuff so uh this is what you would use to hook up after you've emptied your black tank, you'd fill it up some and then keep flushing using this port here. And that's for your front black tank. Over on this side, Molly, come around. You have yourself just an electric outlet. GFCI protected right here. And I gotta find out what that switch is for. <laughs> Uh, and then of course down here, this is something fun to remember is when you're connecting up your water hose, or your cable line or anything like that, you want to go up through this little, you know, pull the plug up here so that you can close your storage door 
and you're not closing it on your electric planks. I've only done that a few times. This is the fun stuff here. You got your uh, tank flush handles here. Uh, left side is your black tank for the forward. That's your toilet in the master. You got your uh, middle one is your gray tank that's in the, the shower and the sink for the master bath. And then you've got your uh, right handle is your kitchen uh, gray tank. And then that comes out of uh, down below. You got your main living room slide here. Let's look back here and you can see the master bedroom slide the slide within a slide. We've already gotten a few comments about this and we're only three weeks in about, oh my gosh, you have two slides? But yeah, we do. And uh, what that is, is the bed is right in here. So it bumps out and bumps out. That's what gives us that four feet of space between the bed and the dresser inside. Uh, pretty much only the Cyclone has that, that I'm aware of. You got your three 7,000 pound axles to, to get you safely down the road. This is your black tank flush for uh, the back bathroom in the garage. And then of course, same thing here. You got your two, uh, two flush handles. Bottom one is black. I remember that BB, bottom black. And then the top one is the gray uh, tank. So you've got two gas uh, tanks here. You've got one, the forward one here is for the generator. It's a 20 gallon tank. Uh, and then the rear one is your auxiliary tank, which is for whatever you want to use it for. Uh, this is a toy hauler. So you have your ATVs and your uh, uh, dirt bikes or side-by-sides or whatever the case may be. And what you have is you have a fuel panel here. So on your monitor panel, you turn on your fuel pump, you come over here and you hit on like that. And as you can see, generator tank, we're at about a quarter full. The auxiliary pump tank, we're about, we're fully full. So here's your, your gas pump. You would just use this like any other normal pump. After you've turned it on, it'll last for five minutes and then it'll turn off. And then you have to do it again for another five minutes and keep doing that. From what I understand, I haven't used it yet. It's very slow. So it's just a patience process, but we use it because we have no toys to refill our generator tank. So that's what our plan is, is we now have 50 gallons of fuel for our generator. That's great for boondocking. Back here, this is your shore power, 50 amp hookup. So uh, pretty standard, uh, you just plug it in, kind of turns a little bit, and then you screw down the cap to hold it on there nice and secure. Uh, so what we have in the back here, is the main feature of the toy hauler. Just fold it down, and this is your ramp to load up all your toys. But when you're not using it as a ramp, there's two cables that create the deck for the toy hauler. You can get a feature that adds a uh, step up, but I figure climbing is just useful. What you have are basically side rails for your deck. It just rolls out, kind of go a little bit in on itself like that, locks into these pins here, and you just go straight with it. Go. Same thing on the other side. Locks in, and then this locks in down below, and then these corner pieces right here lock in the braces to keep it nice and steady and secure. And then right here, you have yourself a door, slides over, keeps it nice and locked, and then you can slide it back to open up your door to get out of your deck. You got your three season doors right here. Um, you saw them from the inside. From the outside, they're, uh, they're locked currently uh, from the inside, but you have fully screened in, you got some uh, plex bus, I believe. This slides up and goes into place however you want to do it. Uh, when you're done, or I should say, when you have the need for the ramp, when you have the need for the ramp, 
You just lift up a little bit. It's very light. It's spring, uh, spring hinged at the bottom of the ramp. So it makes it one person easy operation. You just pull up on a little bit. You pull the D ring out. You remove the cable like that. You do it on the other side and it just falls down, becomes your ramp. Let's put this back real quick. Boom, simple as that. All right, so we're coming around to the, the back right corner. You have your garage door goes in. These are a little different. They just fold up into themselves. That's as simple as that. Coming around here, you've got a spray port. Remember that little hose I was talking about before that coils up? It can also plug into this side, which is really nice because it's right in between your two doors. After a nice long day of doing whatever and you're kind of dirty and muddy, you don't want to go into your uh, house that way. So you just hose off, rinse off right here before you go on up into your room. Uh, and so next to the spray port, you do have uh, your exhaust for your heater. Uh, you have a propane heater that'll vent through the floors uh, throughout the unit. But uh, looking up, you can see your two awnings that kind of cover almost the entire length of the RV. So uh, my guess is here, we're talking about 35 feet of awning, which is fantastic. There are LED lights in the awning itself, uh, in that uh, rail there. And then you have a couple LED scare lights uh, below the awning that you can turn on individually as well, uh, separate from the uh, other lights. Uh, otherwise, I think that's pretty much it for an exterior basic tour of the uh, the 4007. Uh, thanks for watching the video. I do appreciate it. Make sure that you like, subscribe, follow along on our adventure as we continue to go around the U.S. with a family of five.